Hello, I'm Dr. Abstract, this little fellow here, and this is the Zim site at zimjazz.com. I'd like to take you through some basics of Zim. We'll do a few of, of these as well. If you've never coded in Zim or in the canvas, then I'll show you around a little bit. Does that sound good? So uh, this is zimjazz.com. There is a learn section right here. And if I press that, uh, here's some basic Zim stuff right here. And it's suggesting that you can code with a computer, a text editor, and a browser, and you're happy. So that's great. Here are some, some suggestions. And uh, we can go to the code section to get a template. Or if we want, we can code right in an online editor. There's a couple online editors that, that we use uh, in Zim that we've made for Zim. One is for the kids. <laughs> and here we are coding some basic Zim stuff right in a browser and getting a result right there in the browser that you can test. So that's pretty easy to do. There's also a lab, which is a little bit more grown up, I suppose. <laughs> Although the kids site is fine for you to work on too, if you're just starting. Um, the lab looks like this, and it's a place where you can type in here. It, it tells you sort of what you've been given or what we're assuming. And if we type a new circle in here, and we dot center that on the stage like so, then we can hit view, and there's a circle on the stage. Uh, that's sort of a two-step process where you type the code and you hit view and it pops up in a window. Whereas the Zim Kids, which is available down here in the footer, or indeed if you're on the front page of Zim, it's available in the gold bars. So there's Kids. There's also Lab right there. So uh, Kids is a place. And within Kids, there's a bunch of um, tutorials, I guess you could call it. Some basic JavaScript tutorials. That's the first, first one here, the parts of code that we use. Variables, functions, loops, events, conditionals, etc. Uh, but then there is also working in Zim, some fun things with making bugs and following along paths and collecting sugar and physics, and then some things which are a little bit more advanced. But each of those you can go into and do tutorials with that, and you can code right in those tutorials. There's also Slate right here, which is what that link was pointing to. Uh, Slate is a place where oh, <laughs> uh, we were, uh, it's remembered my last code, uh, but Slate is a place where you can, I'll clear that now, I'll run a demo, where you can type in some stuff on the right hand side and make it happen on the left hand side with a test. If we clear that completely, then you have a, a clear slate. And here's where you would say a new rectangle. Let's try rectangle like that. And we will this time just dot add to instead of centering. And let's see what happens. And I haven't really started talking about the Zim code. That's what I'd like to get to as soon as possible. But I want to make sure that everybody's comfortable knowing where we can type this code. <laughs> Makes sense, doesn't it? If I hit test now, there's the rectangle that gets added. Uh, this gray, light gray part is called the stage, and that's where we see stuff. Um, and this is all in a fit mode, um, as in this proportion of the stage is fitting within that size there. So we can uh, see that, that that changes like that if, if we want. Um, but all this is uh, that we've seen so far is kind of more online coding. I'd like to get you as soon as possible uh, coding on your own computer in a text editor. Uh, that's the professional way to code, and you'd probably continue on coding like that. And it's very easy to do as well. Okay, so those were some online versions. And if you want to get back to Zim, we're, this is a kids uh, a site for kids, so we kind of try and keep them here in the kids. Uh, there's a magic section which talks about the things that we're coding with and gives you examples here. And so that's it's a lovely way to begin because it was written for kids. So, hey, that's great. There's information about parameters. All this stuff is what we professionals code with as well, except we're using nice, simple words that kids will understand, which is great for learning. 
Um, so we want to keep them here on the kids' site mostly, and uh, therefore the only way back to get to the main Zim site is this up, up in the corner here. So there we are. We're back to the main uh, Zim site. Also, if you prefer learning from videos, hey, you're in a video right now, maybe you do, then the Learn section right here has, uh, after the intro, we take you right in to where videos are. And there's a whole bunch of videos. So this is a long video series right here called Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. And I'm pressing that now. And there's a little bit of an introduction. There's an introduction video. And then there's a bunch of videos that are all broken down into one of the things, you know, these are basics. Well, you know, that's what we go through. There it says code basics, how to start an editor and a canvas template. So really, I'll probably be repeating, um, certainly be repeating this stuff. But I thought I would just take a few cracks at it with, you know, just sort of more of a free form basics. Uh, that might entice you a little bit more. And then if you want, you can come in here and actually go through the many videos that will take you through interactive coding. Interactive coding is a wonderful uh, world and we've got lots of lessons right up to lesson nine. So as you can see, a bunch of videos here, those are all hosted on YouTube and they're broken down by parts as well. So these aren't separate videos, but these jump you into how to do a drag and a press up. If we click on that right there, it opens up the video and uh, there it is. Look, label.drag. And uh, we continue to talk about it at, at that point. So um, that's the video section. Also in the learn section is school. So that comes after the video. So here are the videos. School and videos are all kind of connected as it says here, Zim School. So right here is Zim School and it's the lessons zero to nine, or is it one to nine? One to nine, I'll press here. Here are the lessons display objects. And this is like a book. So if you prefer to learn sort of like a book or from a book, here it is. There's a little bit of theory about what we're learning. Oh, you might also want to take a look at, well, it's back in the all lessons here, students and teachers. If you're a teacher or want to teach code, or if you're a student, um, re have a read of, of that. It sort of introduces why learning and coding on the canvas is so wonderful. It's, it's very visual for left and right brain learners. We've uh, been doing this a long time. We've simplified it. It's a lovely way to code. Anyway, back into the lesson here. Um, we've got references. So there's um, these what is, what is an object, what is a class, what is a property, what is a method. So each of these things has a bunch of references. Those are little video snippets. We talk about how classes are a template, which uh, an object, which is like a noun is made. They define properties and methods. Those are like uh, verbs and adjectives or adjectives and verbs. And so here is sort of the theoretical stuff about what we're learning. And, and then there's more about parameters. So this is more of a, a high school, college sort of um, uh, aim as opposed to Zim Kids. So we're learning about the same thing, parameters and variables, but in a sort of a more grown up way, I guess you could call it. <laughs> All right, so this is Zim School, and within Zim School, uh, spelt with a K, there are practices here too. So we can practice making shapes. You take a look at the code that is here, and you type it just below, and you see the results right in here. So once again, a new, uh, how about triangle this time? <laughs> Going through our shapes, dot center. All right, and we hit test, and there's the triangle now centered uh, below like that and dot animate. So here we are now going to animate it and we're going to animate its scale, scale if I can spell scale, to be twice as big. And then we hit test. And there it is. It just animated to be twice as big. Zim is just wonderful <laughs> how this stuff all makes sense. Uh, then there's more on transformations. So how do we change change these things? How do we make them bigger and smaller? How do we put them in certain places? Um, there's a new grid and just, just out of interest, new grid, we may as well do this now. We're talking Zim basics. This shows pixels at the moment, but or sorry, percentage, but we can change it to pixels. Basically, if I move my mouse here now, you can see that the top left-hand corner is a zero, zero, if I can get it to the top left corner, zero, zero. 
So x and y are 0 and 0 at the top left. x gets bigger as we go to the right. So that goes to whatever, 500, I think. And it gets bigger, y gets bigger as we go down. So it's a little bit different than your traditional Cartesian coordinates. I remember those from plotting or graphing, uh, if, you've, if you've done that before. All right, so zero, zero, top left corner. And that's, that's quite common in this thing called interactive media. All right, so there's, there's one of the basics for you. And then here's another part on how to make components like buttons and labels and sliders and dials. So that would look like new dial, D-I-A-L dot center. And we're going to center the dial and hit test. And there's a dial. Cool, huh? And we can specify all sorts of things about that dial, like its color and its min and max and then blah, 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 blah. We can also find out what the dial uh, is reading. And, you know, we can also put numbers on that dial if we wanted to. And then there's your, your summary. And the next one is uh, on animation and these things called configuration objects. But rather than go through school right now, I just want to play around in Zim and actually do some coding. But here is Zim School. That was lesson one on display objects. It also looks at these things called configuration objects, which is a really um, handy thing in Zim that lets us do parameters in two different ways. And, and um, you'll see that that's very convenient. And as far as I know, we're the only framework that does that. Um, so that's exciting. Mind you, what we're using here is all JavaScript. So we're in JavaScript and other framework could do this and we're in JavaScript, but we've set up a special way in our framework so that it accepts parameters in two different ways. Uh, that's getting a little bit ahead of our time, but we, since we use it uh, all, you know, we use it a lot, uh, we want to introduce it early. And we also like to look at animation early because we can do that quite easily, as you saw. And animation is fun for people. So that's what's exciting about learning with Zim. You get to animate, you get to do all these fun things, not make some boring HTML page. <laughs> like, it's like, oh my gosh. It's, it's just too bad that more people don't want to learn on the canvas because it's a beautiful way to learn JavaScript and programming. Functions and events are next. So how do we find out what those components are? Abstraction is a key concept in coding uh, that helps us. Even just storing in a variable is an abstraction. So it's helpful for us to know what that means. I'm Dr. Abstract. So I'll take you through that in lesson four. Then we've got arrays and loops, uh, conditionals and debugging, templates and building. So all of this stuff so far is just kind of like all right there in the computer. But if you want to then make stuff on your own, you want to choose a template and get building applications. And so there's techniques for that listed in there. And then controls. Controls are special things like particle emitters, motion controllers, and uh, physics, and parallax, and sprite animations, and things. So there's um, a whole series of controls, uh, responsive design, page layouts, and stuff like that, that are all listed in here. And there's probably even more by now. And then finally, a lesson on data, where we find out how to store things. And Zim's got a lot of stuff for that, including binding and ZimBase on the database side to, again, make that stuff easy as well. All right, that was um, a tour through some of the resources that are available. Why don't we try out some code then? So as mentioned, there's the code page. And if we press on the code page right here, copy and paste this code into a text file on your computer, save the code as code.html and view in the browser. So we can hit copy. <laughs> now that should copy it and copy. <laughs> What's going on? Refresh, copy, there we go. Um, I think because I selected this, it probably thought that I was still selected in that box or something like that. Anyway, uh, there it is down below here. We hit copy. There's also more templates that you'll get to eventually as you use Zim more. Um, this one is, when we just copied that one, this is going to be for the fit template. So if I press on the fit template, here's an example of the fit template. This is in a browser now. And as I change my browser around, <laughs> hello, dark mode. <laughs> anyway, as I change my browser around, you can see that our, our stage, this is what's called the stage. It's actually a canvas tag, I guess. 
um, our stage fits within the browser window. That's good for playing around with, uh, and, and it's actually good for many, many of the examples that you're going to see are in the fit mode. It's the easiest to code in. And it's, it's good for on the computer like this when you, you, know, you wanna make something. Uh, not so good for mobile because if the mobile was say this narrow, like the aspect ratio that we have here, all of this space, this brown, that's not brown, gray space on the ends there wouldn't be used. Only, only this stuff is a stage that gets used. So in that case, we probably want the full template. So now this is full, as you can see, and uh, we, we can make sure that we scale our app sort of more individually in here. And that's, that's under responsive design, and we have a layout class for that, and it's more advanced. So uh, it is there. And, and you can certainly use that. You can also put Zim inside of an HTML tag. So here's Zim inside of HTML. So this is HTML here, and we're sitting with Zim inside of a div tag. And again here, in a slightly different way where we keep the aspect ratio and Zims in that tag. All right, so just keep that in mind for the future that there are other templates there and that's also in what's called the Zim docs and stuff like that. But we've copied just the fit mode right there. It says fit. Uh, so we've, we've copied the fit mode template. And now I'm going to put the browser off to the side here. And I'm opening up one of those text editors called Adam. Um, Adam's free, really adam.io is where you can get it from. Free, really easy to use. The world of uh, uh, developers have kind of gone to probably VS Code now. VS Code kind of came along. It, we used to be Atom and Sublime almost solely, and this is after the legacy of Dreamweaver. And it, we've sort of stopped using those uh, big, heavy uh, IDEs, they're called. Um, so Atom is what I use here and what I'll be using through all of the, the tutorials and stuff like that. So you may want to choose that, and you can jump between the 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 different um, editors. It's pretty, they're pretty light to install, easy to use, and you can decide yourself. They'll work roughly the same way. So I have some folders over on the left-hand side of Adam. Uh, we just basically want to make uh, an HTML page. That's where we code. And I, I've made a folder called basics right there. So there's my folder called basics. I'll right click in there and I will say new file and call it mm, first.html or htmk, first.html. So where we code is in an HTML page. And then we put the HTML page into a browser and the browser shows us what that code is doing. And now I hit paste, control V. That basically pastes the, the template that was on the code page. There it is. That's the template that was on the code page. We've pasted it in to our first.html page. And as you can see, there's an HTML tag. The HTML has a head. And all of this stuff is in the head there. And then it's got a body. And we've got nothing in the HTML body because our code is going to make a canvas tag for us. The canvas is a new HTML5 tag that allows us basically to code an image. It's all really one big image, but the code is changing that image. So uh, there you go. Uh, you don't have to worry so much about that. You just, you just come on down here and start coding with us. So I'll, I'll take you quickly through there. Uh, there's the title, Zim Code Creativity. You can change that to whatever you want. And that shows up in the top of the browser, sort of. It doesn't show up on the browser page. Um, but if you did a Google search for your app or something, that would be the, like the title of your app. Um, here we are bringing in two JavaScript files. We're bringing in create.js, which is what Zim is built upon. And then we're bringing in Zim. Uh, create.js has been loaded billions of times by people. Um, it, it helps us with the canvas. The canvas is a very... Uh, raw, lower level, very it's sort of harder to work with. You've got to do more code to make things in it. So CreateJS comes along and helps us, uh, for instance, 
a canvas tag, just a normal canvas tag, you can draw pictures. That's sort of it. You're just drawing rectangles, squares, lines, well, rectangles, squares, uh, rectangles, circles, lines, that kind of stuff. You're just drawing things or bringing in an image and showing it. But raw canvas doesn't have any containers to hold them. You're just, you just put them all on the, on the canvas. So CreateJS gave us containers, which are really handy. It helps us organize this stuff. So if we draw a bunch of things and have a bunch of pictures and that makes a person, when we move that person, it's all in a container, so it all moves together. Or we hide something and it all hides together. And so CreateJS gives us containers. It gives us events too, to find out what we're pressing on on these pictures. <laughs> Basically, it's trying to give us what we had already when we were using Flash. So we've been doing interactive media for a long time. Before Flash, there was Director. And we've established a system of how this works. And a lot of smart people have been building that for many years to make interactive media. And CreateJS continues that uh, on the canvas. And then Zim gives us a whole bunch of components and conveniences and controls. So Zim is about double the size of CreateJS now. Uh, some people thought that CreateJS was kind of dead, that it wasn't changing. Well, we don't actually want it to change. It's a basis. It's the base that we're building on. If CreateJS kept changing, then it would be Zim, <laughs> which is still growing and, and changing. Um, so uh, we're happy. CreateJS is very stable. We built like thousands of things on it. Millions of people have viewed, you know, Zim things, and they're all still working because CreateJS is so stable. So yay! Uh, and then we've got uh, the Zim. So you don't need to worry about it. You can just put those script tags in there, and they're on what's called a CDN, a Content Delivery Network. I'm getting a telephone call. Uh, yeah, they're, they're called a content delivery network. I'm sorry, I don't know how to make it not telephone call. I'll, I'll just say that I'll call back. Hang on. Hello? Hi, I'm doing a video recording on, on Zim, so I'm going to have to call you back. Is that okay? All right, bye. All right, that was a friend of mine who is doing digital vision boards, and I happen to have a meme maker and uh, it's great. She saw that and said, hey, that would be perfect for me. So we're working on that together again in Zim, where you can upload pictures and uh, write text and make shapes, move them about, change their alpha scale and rotation and make uh, a collage type thing or a meme, for instance. And so uh, we're just working on that. And that was the call. All right. Let's see, uh, we're bringing in Zim. Now we come down to our own script. This is the script that we get to use. This is all still part of the template and we'll want a code where it says, put your code here. So we've got this thing called a frame and this is a Zim frame. So frame is code that Zim made that will help us fit or scale in some manner, help us scale our application into the browser window. It also helps us load images and text and fonts and, or not text, uh, fonts, um, sounds, that kind of stuff in as, as well. So that's what the frame does. And because we have this frame, the, uh, you know, the, that's when we said, oh gosh, we got a frame class. Hey, we're a framework. So we call Zim a framework. It tries to give you everything you need to be able to make an app. And indeed, I think you'll see that it does. You can, if you're, you know, just checking this out and you're already a developer and you're using Vue or React or whatever, uh, you can embed Zim into those and you would want to look at the dev site if that's the case. So we'll just pop on over to there for a second. So back in Zim, right there is devs on the end there. So Zim can be used by developers. This top is Zim. The rest of the page is HTML, except these things are Zim too. So there's a Zim dial embedded in HTML. Here's a sprite that's walking around embedded in HTML. Here's something that we can drag embedded in HTML. And so you can take Zim and you can embed it in HTML. That's that sort of represents HTML5 or React, Angular, Vue, etc. 
in a div tag. Here's a couple templates for that. Uh, but we're also saying, or, <laughs> it's, a, it's a big or, don't use those frameworks. Really, you don't have to. We built tons of really cool stuff just in Zim. If you need backend, we can connect to that without React and Vue and all that headache, because uh, I don't know, maybe you guys like it, but we're constantly coming in at half the size of React and Vue <laughs> when they try and do stuff like Zim does. So if you're doing stuff that Zim can make, just use Zim. Don't just leave those alone. And so we're showing you, oh, okay, or developers can come and make mobile apps and games and stuff like that uh, right over here. Okay, and that's them exp you know, explaining why that's good. So anyway, this, this site was for developers. Okay, so if you are a developer, you can come in here and, and check out all that. Oh, should mention, uh, there is a place in the code and in, in the learn section where we meet this guy, Dr. Abstract on Medium. And there's this article, Your Guide to Coding Creativity on the Canvas, that we took all summer and built a 12-part guide. So that guide has 12 guides inside it that guides us to all of these things. So we, we also have some guides outside of that, such as when do we want to use a JavaScript Canvas framework? Uh, but anyway, and, and selecting a JavaScript Canvas framework. Those are external uh, guides in a sense, but here they are. Guides to editors and templates on the Canvas, guides to coding concepts, guides to um, components in JavaScript, conveniences, interactivity, animation, accessibility, images, sounds, sprites, styles, responsive and adaptive design, and controlling Canvas. Okay, so those there's a set of 12 guides in there, all part of the main uh, Your Guide to Coding Creativity on the Canvas. So those are Medium articles, but they're really well laid out there. Like I said, took all summer to make those, lots of examples, I tutorials right in them, lots of pictures, uh, edited, <laughs> you know, so um, there you go. Okay, uh, back to it. That was for developers. I'm just gonna close that down. And let's come back to trying to get some, some basic coding in here. Does that sound good? So we've got this frame and we're saying what mode it will be. Uh, we're going to try and fit this in the browser window. And these are the dimensions that we are giving it. This is the color of the canvas and this is the color of the outside of the canvas. I'm going to right click here and say, um, open in browser plus, and that will open this thing it right in the right hand side here, although I don't see it at the moment. What happened to it? Oh, I haven't saved it. So save the file that we were in Atom. I pasted in the code, but I didn't actually um, save it. And the little blue dot up here told me I hadn't saved it. So that's one of the first things. If you see nothing, make sure you save your file. <laughs> now I'm hitting the refresh and this is what I expected to see. So this is what the Zim template looks like. Uh, in Atom, it doesn't come with this, uh, as you saw, I right click open in browser plus. That's a package that you can install. So under packages, you can say uh, settings view, or there's other ways to install, but install packages and themes and type in open in browser and hit enter and you can install that. You don't have to install it, but for me, when I teach, it's handy because then I can have a browser right here and the code right here, and it sort of helps to, to show both. Otherwise, you can open in browser. So now I've clicked open in browser, and here it is popped up in my current browser window. Uh, that also doesn't come with Atom. <laughs> All right, you have to install the package called open in browser. So there's a browser plus and open in browser, singular, not open in browsers, open in browser, singular. And that's all in the first video on how to set up your, your environment. I'm not really wanting to go too much into that. Um, and, and if you know anything about HTML, you should know how to open up an HTML page. Basically, you would find that HTML page. It's in the basics folder. Just go find it, drop it on a, drop it on a browser. Okay, you just pick it up drop it right in the browser or right click on it and say open it or even double click it and it'll open up in a browser. So hopefully you know how to open up uh, HTML in a browser. Uh, if not, we've got, we've got videos that will help you through that. Okay, and take you through that, but it's not going to be this video. <laughs> 
Although I guess I, I just told you how to do it, didn't I? It's not that hard. Uh, however, it can be confusing, or if you don't know how to do that, then, you know, how would I know? Uh, so there you go. So in we come, we've got this ready event. When the frame is ready, when it's fit itself, in, uh, made a canvas, fit the canvas into the HTML page, made the stage. We have this thing called the stage. That's this light gray part. Uh, if it's not light gray, we could make the stage purple. So now it's purple and I hit refresh here. And there's the purple stage. This outer color, dark, let's go yellow. And we refresh here. And now the outer part is yellow and the stage is purple and our circle, which we haven't seen yet, is blue. Okay, the next parameter after that, these things are called parameters. We're telling the frame extra information. Make it the fit mode. Make it 1020, make it this size, etc. So we're telling it extra information. The next parameter is what images and sounds do we want? It could be a list of those. And the next one is what path are those found at? If, if, if they're in an assets directory, we often use this thing called assets. It means both pictures and sound. So we can put, put them all in an assets directory. We can tell it that directory and it will know to find them there. And then we can bring in those pictures uh, later. I don't know if we'll get picture, two pictures today, but I'd like to do several of these uh, you know, videos of basics, uh, just playing around. Uh, hopefully you enjoy them and we'll get to pictures in one of these videos, I'm sure. All right, so there's, when the frame is ready, we call this function right here. That's called an arrow function. An arrow function uh, looks like this. It starts off with round brackets. It has a little arrow like that and then it has squiggly brackets. Nice, it looks like barbells almost. So round brackets collect parameters the arrow says pass those parameters into this block of code. So we can put a whole bunch of code in there. And indeed, that's what we've done in this case. So there's the spaces here don't matter, but don't put spaces between there. That's uh, an arrow operator needs to go together like that. Uh, these spaces don't really matter though. Okay, so there, and I'm not really here either today to teach you JavaScript basics. So this is basic, Java, basic JavaScript. It's ES6 or the latest version of JavaScript. Uh, otherwise in the past, you may have seen this and that would work just fine too. This is called an anonymous function and that works fine as well. So you see lots of examples of Zim out there using anonymous functions because they're older, but lately we're using ES6. So that's what this arrow function looks like. Just a little bit shorter to work with and it has some nice conveniences. But like I said, not here to talk about JavaScript basics. We're here to talk about Zim basics. So when the frame is ready, uh, here's what we're going to do. All of this stuff inside of this block of code squiggly bracket to squiggly bracket. Um, one thing is we're going to ask for the stage property of the frame. So we've made a frame and the, the frame has a stage. That's this purple thing. Basically, that's just the canvas. We use the term stage because it's kind of cute. Hey, what are we going to put on the stage? And it's also what interactive uh, coding has used since the 90s, maybe even earlier, I'm not sure. But uh, I've been coding since the 90s. Director uses a stage and you've got a director, right? Hey, I'm a director, who's on the stage? You know, anything we wanna see, we put on the stage. Flash had a stage and uh, Zim on the canvas. CreateJS has a stage and Zim uses the CreateJS stage. So the stage comes from CreateJS uh, instead of typing frame.stage every time, you see we have to update the stage when we make a change. I'd have to go like this, I could, frame.stage.update, that's just a little bit annoying. So our template shortens that by saying, hey, we've got a local variable called stage, and it's referring to the frame stage. We also do the same thing with this, the width and the height. We use the width and the height a lot. So uh, part of our template is we're just saying, hey, let the stage width be this and let the stage height be that. In the past, you may be used to uh, vars, var like that. Uh, that stands for a variable. So uh, in ES5 and earlier, we would use vars like that and be just like that. Uh, in ES6, we have const and we have lets. 
if we're using the fit mode, these guys could be cons. The, because the, when we use the fit mode, the stage width and stage height never changes. So according to us, it'll always be the same in our code. That's why it's easy. But what, what happens is the fit mode scales our whole thing so that it fits within the browser window. But in here, in our code, we are, it's always 1024 by 768. Therefore, we could use const. However, if you decided to use the full mode like that, all of a sudden, the stage width and stage height are no longer constant because they would end up changing based on your window size. So for our template, we decided not to make them const for you, but rather let's. Let's allow you to change the value or change the object that is stored inside of these um, variables. Okay, so that's our template. Uh, we also have a stage.update at the end because anytime we make a change, we do not automatically update the stage. The coder has to decide when to do that and that saves on batteries. It's one of the things we've learned as we move to this mobile world. Flash didn't do that. It updated the stage all the time and, and therefore it ran out the batteries uh, faster. So, uh, I mean, it could have pro probably could have progressed and maybe has progressed. <laughs> I'm not sure. Actually, um, Flash exports to CreateJS. HTML5, the HTML5 export in Flash is to CreateJS. Therefore, it exports to Zim. So let me just show you that briefly. If you're interested in that side of things. If we go to Zim here and hit code, there's features of Zim. So right after the template here are features. Here's how to make mobile apps in five minutes, these things with the Zaps tool. And then there's Zim Shim. So Zim is a way to make use of, because Animate, Adobe Animate exports to CreateJS, it really exports to, uh, to Zim as well. So um, the Zim Shim just makes that easier. All right, and you can download a zip file that shows you how all of that works. Also under features is accessibility. And this is the CDN content delivery network where, oh, I was wanting to show you that too back up in the template. That's where uh, we're hosting CreateJS in, in our versions of Zim. It's really, really fast. It's on uh, Cloud, CloudFront, sorry, Cloudflare. It used to be on CloudFront uh, in Amazon, but now it's uh, Cloudflare. And you don't need to worry about it, or you can host it yourself. So you can grab versions of these and host host them yourselves if you so desire. But if if you don't know what I'm talking about, just let's <laughs> just put those in there. All right, coming on back down, we're wanting to get to where we can type some code, and probably what we'll do is because I've taken you through, you know, ah, blah 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 blah, all of these uh, sort of housekeeping basics. We'll just do a little bit of the Zim basics right in here, and then we'll move to another video where we uh, continue on on more basics. Okay, so put your code here. Uh, that's where we're at, isn't it? Yeah, because the stage.update is there. Great. We're ready to see what's inside of here. The code that we do have is a new circle with a hundred radius. And these are called parameters and a color of blue. You might be wondering about these colors. You can also put quote blue, in which case that's an HTML blue. And it's, oh, and I'm in full mode. <laughs> so here I'm in full mode. Note full mode doesn't automatically scale. So you'd have to put a resize event in here and do manual scaling. And we've got all sorts of things in Zim for that, a layout class, scale two, scale, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But it's a little bit harder. As you see, it's like, oh, wait a minute, this is no longer centered. What happened? Uh, we'd have to recenter it in a resize event. Anyway, so we don't want the full mode, we want the fit mode. Uh, by the way, these are new constants where we don't have to put the quotes. If you do put the quotes, then do it lowercase like that. That's how uh, many, or if not all, of the previous examples, we've just changed this to, um, to a fit constant, as in two days ago. So. <laughs> All of the examples before this did the fit with the string like that. So we're happy to present fit without the string. And that's a little bit like these colors as well. Zim, basically, these are Zim colors. That's why we don't have strings around them because they're variables that Zim has already made to provide you with a Zim purple and a Zim yellow and a Zim blue. So this is 
not a Zim blue, that's the HTML blue. You can also do whatever blue is, uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, uh, what, FF or something? Is that blue? I can't, can't remember which one's blue. Oh, it is, okay. So that's um, the HTML hex blue, at which point you, you still need quotes for that or HTML colors. But for Zim colors, green, there's a Zim green, and these match, the, the Zim colors match the Zim logo colors. Uh, there's also various shades of gray and dark and um, white and black and, and, and those colors. Uh, by the way, all of that stuff you can see um, if you go to the Zim site right here and hit docs. So in the Zim docs, there's the docs on the frame and all of the things that you can pass into the frame. That's not it for the docs. You open that up and uh, there, there they all are right there. And it describes a whole bunch of notes, examples, and, uh, and then starts talking about what the parameters are and which modes do which. Okay, so that's, that's the docs. Uh, but here are the colors right here. So we can open that up and, and there are the Zim colors that we provide. And examples. So that's that's the docs. Um, so we've made a, 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 cent, a circle of 100. So that's 100 pixels and made it green. There's more as well. We could say white. That means the border color and then how thick that border color is, 10. And when I refresh here, now we've got a white border around that that is 10 pixels wide. We're centering that, and by default, if we don't put anything there, it means center it on the stage. So uh, there were older examples where we'd have to put in stage like that and say where we're centering this. But uh, now we just sort of automatically center it on the stage. So um, as, if I refresh here, as you can see, that's centered on the stage like so. And then, we're dragging it, and that allows us to drag it like so. Isn't that cool? Now, this is called chaining, and you may or may not have seen that before. Um, we make sure, because it's so easy, we make sure in Zim to do chaining. Take a look at what that means. It means we make a new circle, and we dot onto the end of that. This is a circle object, it's called, and we're dotting on the center method, and then we're dotting on the drag method. For this to happen, each of these methods needs to return the object, and they do. So we've made Zim very, very chainable. Almost all of our methods chain, and you'll see that that becomes very handy. If we didn't do chaining like this, so basically what this means is we've made the object, and then we center that object. Center method needs to return the object, and it does, that, that's inside a Zim, it does that. Uh, returning is a, a way that a function can return a value. So we return the object that that is on. And then because this returns the object, drag is now dotted to the object. So that's how chaining works. We can just keep on going. All right, there are a few, func uh, a few methods that don't chain. One of them is the on method, which captures events because it returns not an object, but it returns the idea, ID of the event so that we can turn off the event. Um, but, other, but instead of the on method, we have things like tap and change, which are very common that we would want to click on something, very common that a, a slider will change its value. So those events can be captured by a chainable tap or a chainable change method. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. So we, we've recognized how handy chaining is and made sure that we can do it as much as, as possible. Here's what it would look like if we didn't chain. First of all, we would have to put the circle into a variable. Const circle is equal to, and we would take our circle and we would put it into there. That would be most library or, or frameworks first step. Make the object store it in a variable. Then we would say circle, and uh, if we wanted to center it, um, we might say circle.x is equal to stage width divided by two. So that would take the circles x property and place it at half the stage width. 
and we would do the same thing for the y property, except we'd use the stage height. So that would center it, uh, and if we wanted to drag it, then we would say circle.drag. All right, so that's one way of doing it, or this is the Zim way of doing it. If you wanted to, you could use the center here, so we don't have to do those two steps. We, we could still use circle.center, like so. Mm, semicolon, and then not use the properties. So these are X and Y properties. So this is the Zim way, and this is uh, without chaining. Or so this is with chaining. Chaining is not only Zim. Uh, other, other places can chain. Anything can chain as long as you return the object. But uh, that has to be sort of done in the library or the framework. For instance, this could be done in Java, but it would have Java would have to make sure that they return objects, uh, return the object the methods are on. Um, and they don't. But if they did, or if you're customizing Java with your own code, then you could make it do that. And that's what we've done. We're customizing JavaScript with Zim, and we made sure that we can chain. So generally, we don't do that uh, anymore. Instead, we chain. And this goes on and on. So if we want to animate, dot animate, like that. Uh, if we want to transform, transform. Uh, we can dot transform. If we transform, we wouldn't want to drag. So this is what transform looks like, and I'm not really doing anything with animating just yet, so do it like that. So, oh, we can't see the transform very well because of a couple things. Um, we've got purple lines. We can change the transform colors. Can't remember how to do it. Let's just change the background color to gray. Oh, how about light? Gray would be a little bit too oh, missed. Oh, there's my browser history. Lovely. Refresh. Uh, so this is called a transform right there. As you can see, there's handles. It's not very impressive. There we are, rotating the circle. <laughs> not, that, not that you could tell, huh? Uh, but we could we could squeeze the circle. There you can you can tell that we've done that. Anyway, those are transform controls in Zim. But you see that we can keep we can keep on chaining. There's also positioning and locating things, but why don't we take a look at that when we come back um, the next time? Does that sound good? Um, so we'll call that a basic look at our coding environment. And we'll do another basic very soon. You'll probably even come in and they'll already be done. <laughs> Unless you come in tomorrow, my tomorrow, <laughs> according to today. Uh, but anyway, we're going to do some more and have some fun with that. And I look forward to seeing you. I am Dr. Abstract. And you're welcome to come to zimjs.com, zimjs.com slash slack, S-L-A-K. Let's make that bigger so you can see it. So zimjs.com slash slack, or uh, I have a little hotkey that does zim. Isn't that nice? Just type that out for me. Um, Discord, Discord, like so. How we're differentiating these bet between these two, Slack has been going uh, for longer, maybe 500 people there, 400 people. And it's, uh, I guess you could call it official, where we launch things and, and answer questions and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we've got... I don't know, over 20,000 comments or uh, discussions going back and forth on that. And it's been going for about five years. Zim Discord has just started in the last year. And I'd like that to be a place where we can chat and, and just goof around. And maybe for, for younger folks who like Discord, if you're on Discord and used to it, go ahead and be there. It hasn't exactly happened. I, I've been doing a lot of chatting there. So if you're on Discord, hey, ask us questions there. We're trying to do a and a on Wednesdays as well. So if you're watching a basics one on Zim and, and you're new to code or new to Zim and want to hang out with me and just you know talk at, on Discord, let's do it on Wednesday nights, uh, 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. All right. So hope to see you there at either of these locations. And I am Dr. Abstract. We'll catch you later, huh? Ciao.